A children's movie of all things is raising awareness about panic attacks. So viewers are praising Puss in Boots The Last Wish for its depiction of what it feels like to experience an episode. And there it is. Dr. David Carbonell is a clinical psychologist who specializes in fear and phobias. He joins us live. So we just saw that little bit of a clip with Puss uh, struggling to breathe. Is that a good representation of a panic attack? What are some of the other signs? Uh, struggling to breathe or, or feeling like you're struggling to breathe is probably the number one sign. Uh, heart racing. Uh, or your heart seeming to do things it doesn't ordinarily do, faster, louder, softer, and so on. Uh, feeling lightheaded and dizzy, uh, numbness in the toes and fingers, the extremities, um, uh, apparent muscular weakness, uh, a whole range of powerful physical sensations uh, of fear. That, that lead the person to quickly conclude, oh my God, I'm in mortal danger. Hmm. Dr. Carbonell, what causes a panic attack? Well, we, we know a lot more about what to do about panic than what causes it. Uh, we, we know that uh, panic disorder runs in families, that, that genetic predisposition is a strong factor here, uh, and that uh, the odds of, of, if we talk to someone who has panic attacks, very high odds will find someone else in their, in their family background that has that. Uh, a first panic attack tends to occur in one's 20s or 30s, not necessarily in response to bad events, but when you're moving up to the front ranks of independent adulthood, graduating college, first job, first home, getting married, so on. Uh, so it, it's, it's a developmental event uh, for people who have that predisposition. So let's say someone is experiencing what Puss was uh, feeling in that clip. What do they do to try to get out of that attack? And what about the people around them? How can they help? Uh, the, the most important advice about how to get out of an attack is just stay with it. Give it time to pass. Uh, what takes a first panic attack and converts it into a chronic disorder is the understandable efforts that people make to protect themselves, to flee the scene, to seek help, uh, to stop thinking about it, uh, and thereafter to try and avoid any recurrence. Uh, so. What people need to overcome the, the syndrome of panic is, is to acclimate to those symptoms and give it time to pass, come to see that they don't have to protect, they don't have to flee, they, they just have to do what a long time ago uh, uh, an Australian physician said uh, was float, that's Claire Weeks, float through the panic attack rather than flee or protect. Oh, that's interesting. And we were putting on the screen there what people who may be witness to a panic attack can do. And it goes with the word aware there. You say the key to overcoming is to become aware. Yes, and specifically that, that's an acronym, of course, for the, uh, the words that follow. And the first and foremost of all those steps, uh, I, I hope the viewers are seeing that on the screen, acknowledge and accept. Oh, I'm having a panic attack. Don't like it, don't want it, don't deserve it. If this is what I have to experience now, okay, I'll go along with it. Uh, and if this is what I have to feel now, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll flow with it for a little while and give it time to pass. I'm not gonna run home, I'm not gonna go to the hospital, I'm not gonna drink a large quantity of vodka, I'm just gonna let it come and go. Okay, so be aware, don't tell them not to worry or calm down, that would not be helpful, you say. Thank you so much, Dr. Carbonell, we really appreciate you coming on Houston's Morning Show. Oh, thanks so much for having me.